Hi, I'm Ken. Let's see if we can come up with a better way to release the inner mold out of our plaster when we pour our plaster. In the last several videos, we've been working on making this. So this here is a slip casting form for plaster. The idea is to slip cast a pot like that. And here is the form for this pot. This has the shape of the pot that accounts for shrinkage and we have a slip well on top. This form is then the inside of our plaster form here. And we also need the outside. So I went ahead and 3D printed an outside shell. So that fits together like that. We actually have one more piece here. The plaster gets poured in this way. We pop off the outside shell. Flip it over, we pop off the ring. That connected the two plastic pieces together. And then we pull out the inside. Well, that's the idea anyways, we pull out the inside. I had a challenge getting this out. I've had mixed luck with this. Sometimes it's easy to get out and sometimes it's not. There is a draft angle on this, so it should be relatively straightforward. But since we're pouring the wet plaster around this piece, we actually wind up evacuating all the air. So we're pulling a vacuum as we pull this out. The other thing is the 3D print isn't perfectly smooth. In this video, I was gonna work on how this ring attaches to these pieces. I have some ideas there. And I've been 3D printing a bunch of prototypes. There was a great discussion on the last video and several people had different ideas on how to make the inner mold release more easily. I was thinking maybe we'd either have to add silicone or go to a multi-part inner mold. But if some of these work, then we could probably have a single part inner mold and that would be great, at least for these one part molds. I'm gonna bump the attachment issues off into a future video. And in this one, I'm gonna see if some of those ideas from the comments work on releasing the inner mold. For these one piece molds, it would actually be ideal to just be able to pour the plaster around the 3D print. So what were some of the ideas suggested? One was to use mold soap. I actually did this. I went ahead and put a coating on the outside of the inner mold and the inside of the outer mold. I showed that very briefly so I could imagine it was relatively easy to miss. I'm gonna go ahead and put a few more coats on. I think maybe building up a thicker film of the soap on the 3D prints might be beneficial than what I did last time. The next idea was to actually try and shrink the inner mold. So when the plaster is poured around the plastic, there is a very tight seal and we need to somehow break that. And I tried using air pressure to try and push it in and release it. The idea was to actually try and make this inner mold very cold and ideally it would shrink. Most things shrink when they get cold. And so if we can put something very cold in here, hopefully the plastic would pull away at least enough that we could get air into the sides and push it out. The original suggestion was using dry ice. One of the follow-up comments suggested using a mix of water and acetone or isopropyl alcohol. The idea behind the addition is it drops the freezing point of the liquid well below the freezing point of water so I can actually get it as cold as my freezer. That's about zero degrees Fahrenheit or negative 17 Celsius. So we can fill this up and hopefully have it shrink just a little bit enough to be able to pull it out. The last idea is to actually put a hole in the bottom of the mold here. We could then use air again to blow in and hopefully that air would be enough to push through and break the vacuum and then push this mold out. I'm gonna call that one plan B. Potentially it would wind up creating a small defect in the bottom of the pot. So what was going on? Why did it stick? Well, I've cleaned this up, but the bottom here actually is less smooth than the top. This printed going up, and I'm wondering if the table started wobbling a little bit, so I'm getting a little bit of layer shifts going on here. And I can feel a little bit of texture here. Someone in the comments noticed there was a little bit of plaster stuck here, and so what I'm doing is I'm getting a little bit of an undercut, at least in a couple of different spots here, and that's grabbing onto the plaster. Even in just showing you, there's been a little bit of plaster rubbing off, and I don't know if you can see the texture there or not, but there is a little bit of one. We could do more prep to the 3D printed part, but I wanna see if I can get this to work without having to do that work. And I haven't forgot about the outside. I did have a problem getting this off as well. I wound up cutting it and releasing it that way. I'm definitely gonna address this in the future, but for this video, I'm gonna ignore it. And I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this mold. It'd be nice to have another copy of this plaster right here. And so I'm just gonna tape this back together. This is the outside surface of the plaster, so no big deal. The inside mold is still perfectly intact. So with that, let's start prepping things. So I went ahead and washed all the plaster off from the last time, or as much as I could get. So I have a pretty clean surface. Next up is to apply the Murphy's Oil Soap. Hopefully this is gonna act as a release agent. However, before I do that, I wanna go ahead and put my outer mold back together. I'm just gonna use some foil tape and tape it back together. 
One of the tricks I found with this tape is to use a little bit of the backing to help burnish it in. And it means we have good adhesion. All right, that should be good and plaster tight. Now we can apply the mold soap. So I usually just douse the paper towel liberally and then go ahead and go around and wipe it on. Get our ring here. And finally the inner mold. This is the one that we really want to get done well. Okay, I got a coat on everything. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. Actually, I think I'm gonna put it in front of a fan to accelerate the drying. And then we'll go and put another coat on. All right, that coat is dry. Let me go ahead and do a second. All right, same thing. I'll put it in front of the fan and let it dry and they'll do one more. All right, that's mostly dry. This one here on the inner mold, I think I put in extra thick. So it's having a hard time drying. I'm guessing close to saturation of the surface. I'm gonna do one more coat just to make sure. I'll let those dry for a few more minutes and I'll go ahead and get set for plaster. All right, there's the plaster. And I just measure out the water. So next we'll need to assemble the mold. Okay, there's the bottom. And like last time, I'm gonna do a quick spray of Windex to break any bubbles in the plaster. And then I'll go ahead and tape the outside on as well. While this stuff works pretty well, it also can give you some really nasty paper cuts. If you get your finger on the edge, it can really slice you. That's one of the reasons I don't want to use it going forward. But that's a future video. All right, so all the prep work, check. Have our plaster measured out. A couple coats of Murphy's soap, Windex. We are good to go. So next up, I need to dump the dry into the wet, let it slake, mix it up, and we'll come back to it when it's time to pour. All right, all mixed. This bucket's a little bit too big for this amount of plaster, so we may have caught some bubbles. But now we pour just like before. Again, the plaster calculations are spot on. All right, we go ahead and let this set, and then we'll see if our demolding tricks will work. Okay, the plaster is set. Here is the bucket, and I'll just break that out later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the tape to release the outside. All right, there we go. Now the inside. So first, there's a little bit of plaster that leaked over the inside mold. All right, so the 3D printed lip is now all free. So let's see if I can just pull it out. And the answer is no, it is stuck like last time. So next I'll try what I did before and use a little bit of air around the outside. All right, see if I can blow some air between the plastic and the plaster. It's still very stuck. One of the suggestions before was building a handle in right here so I could pull easier. Right now I'm just using the supports that are still in place. I'm seeing the slip well move just a little bit. So the air is doing something. Beyond the mold soap, which we did, and I did last time, it seems like adding more didn't really help or it wasn't a solution by itself. The next suggestion was to go ahead and see if we can freeze this inside piece and get it to shrink a little bit. Okay, so in this container here is a mix of water and isopropyl alcohol. I don't know exactly how much isopropyl I put in. And it's been in my freezer overnight. It is definitely slushy, it's not frozen solid. So I'm getting close to the freezing point. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and go ahead and put it on the inside and let it sit for a while and we'll see if we can get the inside to cool and shrink a little bit. Very slushy. All right, go up to the rim all the way. So I have a little bit left. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for a few minutes. I have no idea how long, and then we'll dump it out. I can see it melting. Definitely still melting, so we're definitely still pulling heat out. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it and we'll give it a try. All right, now, oh, this is cold. Oh, perfect, wow, that's amazing. That worked really well. So went ahead and slid right out. It's still super cold, even the plastic's cold. 
The plaster is not though, it's cooled down a little bit. And indeed, there's still some plaster that's stuck to the outside edge here. So I think it is the texture of the print that's grabbing onto the plaster. So chemistry for the wind. I think I can go ahead and save this and put it back in the freezer again and reuse it. Definitely a trick to keep around. So one of the other reasons that the PLA may be grabbing on is that the plaster is exothermic when it sets and so it actually heats up. So it could be heating up the PLA and actually causing it to expand slightly inside. So there could be a couple factors at play. The ice and isopropyl alcohol worked. Apparently acetone works as well and I'm guessing there's a variety of other chemicals. But isopropyl is easy to get so that's a good thing. Cool! So maybe we don't need to use silicone or go to multi-part molds after all. For I'm definitely gonna keep this in the freezer so I have it ready to go if I have another stubborn inner mold. And if you try it, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. That'd be great to have some more feedback. The other nice thing about this is I don't think I need the air pressure. I think I can actually get it all off with just the isopropyl alcohol. And that's great. That means more people can potentially use this technique. They need less equipment. I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning up this mold, but you don't need to see me do that. The next video is gonna be about a new attachment method for all these 3D printed pieces. And hopefully I can retire the foil tape and the associated paper cuts along with it. Thanks again for all of the active discussion in the comment section. It is very helpful and hopefully it's helpful to others watching along as well. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, do let me know. Thanks.